This is the Zcam Ipman S or IPman S. It's a wireless video transmitter, and I'm going to show you how you can use this thing. If you want a full review, you know, talking about delay and transmission uh, distance and all that kind of stuff, uh, I'll link the CVP video down below. They did an, an exhaustive review, probably a lot better job than I could do. So I'm just going to link to theirs, and you can go watch theirs. Uh, but <clears throat> one of the first questions I had when I got these, and uh, full disclosure, Zcam sent me these. Um, so I didn't pay for these and uh, they're they're not, you know, paying me or anything. So I'm just giving my review. So anyway, like I was saying, one of the first questions I had when I got these was what can I do with these? Now, obviously, if you have two of these, you can transmit from one to the other. And if I wake up my camera here, um, you'll see it'll get a signal and then it'll jump onto my Atomos Ninja 5. And I'll even hit record on this so you can kind of get an idea of what the video quality looks like. Uh, my um, camera, I can only get it to output, well these are only 1080, so um, it's only going to output 1080, 60 from the, the Canon R5, that's just the way Canon does it, uh, which works just fine, and so this will be recording at 60 frames a second, whatever. I'm doing my video at 24. So anyway, you can get a, an idea of what that looks like, and just here's a quick example of the delay on the uh, transmission, just so you know. But anyway, that's the most simple setup. Um, if you look at the side, there's there's not a lot on these units. Um, obviously, you have your HDMI in and out. Um, you have the power connector in the bottom here if you want to hardwire that. Otherwise, there's the, the Sony NPF battery slot on the back. And then on the other side, you have the on-off switch, a uh, USB Type-C connection. I think that's mostly for firmware, but it also can connect to your phone and like an Ethernet adapter. And then you have the switch which says TX, M, and RX. So obviously, I put this one in TX, this one in RX, and uh, it just transmits. Now, I can't remember if I had to set these up to sync to each other initially or not. The face has just three buttons, a left arrow, a right arrow, and the center has this other button here. And If you push it, it just gives you like this, the uh, firmware version and the serial number, and that's about it. So I can't remember how these things sync. There's not a lot of information about these. I mean, when you get the box, this is what the box looks like. And it just has, you know, trays for the, the unit and the antennas. There was no manual. There's no paperwork at all, at least in, in the ones I got. Maybe they, they added some since then. So you're kind of left to your own devices to figure out how these things work. Um, so obviously, this is the simplest setup, and uh, it works pretty reliably. These antennas are a pretty decent style of antenna, so you get a pretty good range out of these. Um, not as good as like the the new DJI Ronin 4D. They get like 22,000 feet or like you know three or four miles of range. I'd really like to see a company like Zcam get that kind of range out of their wireless system. And if drones can do it, I don't understand why these things can't do it. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you how you can use your phone to monitor the signal from one of these devices. All right, so I have an iPhone, and I'm going to re screen record here so we can see what's going on with the signal. All right, now I'm recording. So you're going to, go, going to go into your settings and go to your Wi-Fi. And these things produce a Wi-Fi signal that you can connect to. So I see this says IPman S10041. And if I look in the face of this thing, I can see it scrolling. And it, it tells me that that's the number of this unit here. So if I connect to that Wi-Fi signal, I also see my camera on there. Okay, so now I'm connected to the Wi-Fi from this box. And if I go to the Zcam monitor app, let's see what happens. It says connecting. Device not found. Now there's a couple of uh, different apps. Oh, input SSID. Okay, so 10041. So this thing is asking for the device ID. And it looks like it's working, maybe. It says start pull stream, it's flashing. I wonder if I need to have these in a, a different mode. Let's try the M mode, huh? Oh, well, it'd help if I had a signal. Hmm. All right, now it's got the signal. It says connecting, but I'm kind of thinking it's not going to connect.
Let me go back to TX. And again, there's no manual for these, so this is kind of how you have to do it. Just fumble around until you figure out how to make it work. Let me try typing this in again. Wants to join the Wi-Fi network from this unit, yes. Which it should have done already. Hey, there we go. And I'm hearing sound from my phone. That's really weird, I'm hearing sound from something. All right, FYI, if you have a Bluetooth speaker connected to your phone, it's gonna transmit the audio from your camera through this to your phone and then to the Bluetooth speakers. That's what my, I was hearing this weird echo over there. Um, and you'll notice I also have the signal on the other unit here. So it's still sending to this and to the phone at the same time. This is a good side by side here. We can see the, uh, the delay. I guess it's the same. Looking at it now, it's, it seems to be the same. So um, with the app, you get a lot more features um, like, you know, false color and waveforms and a histogram and a, uh, vector scopes and you know all the kind of features that you get with the other Zcam uh, camera monitor app which is nice and then oh, there's a live button here so I'm guessing if this works I haven't tried this I, I don't hardly ever live stream you can put in the details of your live stream say from Facebook or YouTube and then you can stream this image so from your camera through the IPMAN S transmitter to your phone to the internets so that's cool what else can we do with this though? I think there's one more thing we could try and that is to stream over the internet directly from this. And for that, I believe we need some kind of an ethernet adapter that goes from USB type C to ethernet. We can get it on our network and then we can see it as a device in like OBS, one of those pieces of software that can stream video. So let's see if we can't get that set up. So I have this USB-C to ethernet adapter. This is made by Belkin and sold by Apple. I believe it's the only one that Apple sells they don't make their own. And I couldn't get this to work. Um, it seems to, to connect and get an IP address, but um, I couldn't get any pieces of software to work from this. However, I was able to get the Zcam Stream Converter app to work over Wi-Fi from that unit. So uh, let's jump into a browser here. If you go to zcam.com like this, go to um, Software Update. If you scroll down here, you see Stream Converter. If you're on Windows, obviously download that version. I'm on Mac, so I downloaded the Mac version here. And it looks like this. And so I'm gonna say connect to IPMAN S Wi-Fi. And it's basically using my Wi-Fi on my computer to find the signal from that device. And now it found that device. It's got that number as it shows on the screen. And that's good. Stream converter, okay. That's not good. Let's see if it actually found it start preview and it should work boom there we go so this does indeed work if I had a URL up here and I'd start then it would start streaming that signal that video signal to YouTube or Facebook or, or, or whatever service you want to stream to so that's pretty cool and again I think the, the delay is probably about the same as it is with the other devices because it's still using the same Wi-Fi protocol yeah, and it looks pretty good. I am recording on my Ninja over here so you can see what that looks like. Um, at, at 1080, my resolution here is only at 1080, otherwise everything looks really tiny. And again, the, the signal from the uh, the camera is only 1080 and these uh, units only support 1080 uh, video. They don't do uh, UHD or 4K. So that's pretty cool. It would be nice if I could get it to work with this um, ethernet because I think this would be a little more um, reliable than a Wi-Fi signal, especially over distances, you might be better off using a cable. And I think there might be a specific adapter you have to buy. I remember seeing somewhere on the Zcam uh, uh, Facebook group, the IP man, there's a Facebook group for uh, these products, these line of wireless products from Zcam. And they've mentioned, I think, some adapter for this thing. So there's three examples of uh, ways you can use these units. So you obviously you can go from HDMI in to HDMI out on another unit and feed a monitor. Uh, you can connect to it on your mobile device with um, the Zcam camera app. Let's make sure that's the right app. 
Zcam monitor app. Uh, it's not the Z camera app. They have the two different apps, at least for iOS. For Android, it might be a different experience. Some, sometimes there's, those apps don't have parity with the iOS apps, so it just depends. Um, so that's the second way. And then the third way is, of course, connecting to software like the Zcam stream converter. This should work with OBS, but I can't get it to work. It sees the device. It sees this unit number, that 10041. It sees it in OBS, but I don't get a, a preview signal. I never get an image. So I think it's close. You have to use like the SSP plugin, which I have. Um, so I'm not really sure if you're more technically savvy about that kind of stuff, maybe you can make it work. I couldn't get it to work. Um, it'd be nice if it was just easier, if it just worked. Um, maybe I have to have this in a different mode or something. There's an M mode on here that I, I haven't actually used yet. Uh, I'm just not sure because again, there's no manual for this. The best you get is this diagram that Zcam shared. It shows you know, multiple of these devices all connected up in various ways through wireless and wired signals or wired connections. So it'd be nice if there was a more um, solid example from Zcam on how these things should be used. Uh, you're kind of left to people like me to try to help explain how they're supposed to be used. And, and I'm not even sure. Um, so that's kind of the downside of a unit like this is just you're left to figure it out for yourself. And that's not very good. And otherwise, I haven't, I haven't talked about the build quality. It's a solid piece of aluminum, not solid, but it's, it, it feels very durable. Um, it is well built like most Zcam products are. It has a single mounting point in the bottom. It has a uh, 3 8 16 with RE locating pinholes and it has an adapter here for a quarter 20. Um, I really wish that these kind of units had multiple ways of mounting, like some kind of a cage, like if you can mount your this little cage to the side of a camera and just stick this in it or something like that because having just that single connection on the bottom means you have to kind of figure out how do you get like an arm or something to hold it and then it ends up sticking like way above your camera. Ideally, I think you want to have the antennas pointing up like this so they radiate and, and transmit better. This is probably not as good. This should be fine. So either th those directions. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just the mounting is kind of cumbersome because um, it'd be nice if this thing was just tight to the side of a camera or something so it didn't stick way up. I had the same issue when I had these... Uh, The Cine i2 Pro from Axune. Yeah, Cine i2 Pro. Um, these are pretty similar devices. This is smaller. Uh, this has four antennas and they're longer and they stick way up. So when I mounted this on my camera, it was just this obnoxious thing sticking way up like with a bunch of antennas. Uh, this might have better range than this one. I don't know. I'm not really going to play around with that because it, it's entirely dependent on your location, uh, how much interference there might be. Um, the build quality in this was really, really great. Um, Similar to this, so no complaints um, with either unit as far as build quality and features. They're actually pretty similar. This gives you more control over, um, uh, if you look at the screen, like it has a control knob here for connecting to the other device and stuff, whereas it feels like th this just has to connect by itself like magically. So if you had like four of these units, I'm not sure how you'd get them all to, to communicate well. Obviously, I think you'd have one on transmit and then the other one's on receive. But if say you had two different situations, like two cameras, and you want to have two different transmissions, I don't know how you'd coordinate that. I don't know if you can tell a receiver to connect to this unit and not a different transmitter. I don't really know. I don't have four units to play with here. So um, it's kind of you know up to you to figure out if that will even work. You'd have to get a bunch of units and then try pushing these buttons. I know you can, if you press these arrows, it flashes the channel and you can change the channel. Um, but that's really about it. Yeah. If you hold the middle one, I think that's how you sync these. So I'm holding, I held it and then it gives me this flashing icon here, which I think means it wants to sync to another unit. So maybe if you had these two, you know, you turn them on and get them to sync, then you turn these off and then turn on another pair. You can get those to sync to the, and then you'll have two different synced systems. Yeah. See, it says right here, RX. So I guess I'd hit that and say, yeah, it looks like that's how you connect them. You, you press and hold the center button until it flashes, and then they're trying to sync with each other. So that's not really hard to figure out. Uh, otherwise, there's really nothing to do with these buttons on the front. It just shows you very, very basic information, like a serial number and, and a firmware version. So that's my experience. I hope that's helpful. Again, this isn't a complete review. Um, go to that CVP video if you want to see a really thorough review. Although I feel like, um, again, they didn't really explain how you can use these units. Um, hopefully I helped. 
with showing you three different ways to use these units. Um, I think obviously the best one is just using the HDMI in and out, that's simple. The phone app seems to work pretty well, although I know people have issues all the time using the Zcam apps and connecting to their cameras. Um, so your miles may vary there. And then the third option for streaming to um, something like OBS or the stream converter software, again, your mileage may vary. It may not work for you. I was able to get a signal, but it, at the end here, it said it lost the connection. So that's because my camera turned off probably. If, if it doesn't have a video signal, it can't transmit anything. It won't transmit a blank screen. So there you go. Um, see you in the next video. Thanks.